Okay, thanks everybody for joining us tonight to uh, go over our pre-competitive individual standard routines that have been revised. And these are going to be effective January 1st, uh, 2022. And joining me this evening is uh, Maureen Johnson who will help me present the webinar tonight. So just to start off with, I'd like to thank the subcommittee members who worked uh, on this project over the past year. Uh, Jenna Jemayev, Maureen Johnson, Jennifer Marin, Debbie Middleton, Sarah Mujo, Elan Pollock, uh, myself, and Leanne Wilson. And thank you also to the technical committee who approved the revisions at the recent uh, 2021 fall technical meeting. And also uh, a shout out to our athlete volunteers. So throughout our, our work on this um, project, we had our our own athletes volunteer to demonstrate and appear in draft videos for the committee. So I thank um, all of those athletes who took some time to be um, our little guinea pigs and try things out for us. Um, and then a big thank you to Elise who filmed all the final versions of our demonstration videos that you will see this evening. Uh, the resource materials, so the demonstration videos that you're going to see this evening will be posted to the CBTF YouTube account, so you'll be able to visit there and watch them again. And then the handbook with the written descriptions will be posted onto the CBTF website. So the format for this evening, we're going to go event by event, and within each event, we'll um, highlight the changes that we made. Then we're going to watch the demonstration video. And then we're going to give you time to try it. So Maureen is going to walk us through if you wish to grab a baton um, or just try any of the body work. Um, she'll walk us through and you can uh, give that a try. It's good to, to be hands on when you're learning these things. So the first thing that uh, you'll see in the new handbook is that we've just made a couple of definitions to the carry position, the cradle position and the attention position just because some of the terminology does vary across the country and we are trying to uh, make that more consistent. So within, within the manual, you're gonna see that the carry position is defined as the pencil hold uh, that we're all familiar with. The cradle position is also kind of known as the ball in the elbow position. Uh, and then the attention position is the carry position, but your hands are at uh, the hip. So just a little clarification there. And then I just wanted to touch break based on the progressions and uh, Maureen, I'll let you uh, speak to this as well. So this is a chart that we've had out for a number of years, but it's a good uh, time to review it. And it just lays out, um, you know, the options that you have for uh, progressing your athletes through the uh, pre-competitive routines. So Maureen, is there anything that you'd like to highlight on this chart? Um, no, we'll do the, the um, swinging arms, et cetera, when you do the video. Um, the only thing I, I could add to this is um, even though it says level one, year one, just so everybody remembers, that doesn't mean first year of twirling instruction. This is uh, later than that. And it could be for a young, a young student starting at five or six, it could be at two years of training later before they do level one in a competition setting, uh, classroom work, yes, but um, an older student, of course, would that wants to go through this program would enter the program sooner just because they're older, they have stronger legs, better balance right from the beginning. But it's really not year one of twirling instruction. Right. Thank you for that clarification. OK, so we are ready to move into each of our events. So we're going to start with basic March one. And there's no change to this routine um, from what you know it, but we just in the written um, material clarified that the heel is lifted in the attention position to start with um, and that there was questioning about eye contact. It has already been described in the handbook, but we reinforced it. I can't, eye contact for basic march one can be straight ahead or the natural turn to face the judge uh, as they're marching. So it's not dictated that it has to be straight ahead or that you have to look at the judge. It's um, coach's choice. So we're going to move on and we're just going to watch this video because Elise did film this for us. Um, and I'm hoping my video works properly here.
So if there's uh, if there's any questions uh, as we're going along, feel free to put your hand up and um, you can ask them. Um, since there was no changes to basic March one, we're not going to jump up and try it on this one. Um, and we're going to move ahead to basic March two. So now for basic March two, again, we clarified that the heel is lifted in the attention position to start with. And we have matched that to, uh, written description to match the video. Uh, we made a note to reinforce that the eye contact is as already described in the handbook for the first square, and that's um, either straight ahead or at the judge. And then on the second square, when it's the modified military beat, um, it, it now specifies that the eye focus is to be maintained forward. So you do not have the option of looking at the judge when you're doing the modified military beat. And then in the written description, we just um, adjusted the actual words and the timing of the salute so that it matches uh, the terminology that we're using within the SDP. So we'll watch a video here of Basic March 2. Sorry, guys. Sorry, that was my fault. There was somebody in the waiting room and it paused my video when I tried to let oh. them in. So let me go here. Uh, okay, still trying to join. Okay, so any questions about the basic March one or two? If there I, are have, I have a comment, not a question. Yes. Yeah. But I have quite often been asked about lifting the heel on the starting position of basic March. And that is um, actually to be a, um, a help in the timing for the younger students, because if they're standing feet together, their weight will be equal. And then when they shift their weight to pick up their foot, they quite often miss count one because they take count one to get their foot up. So now we're marching on the wrong foot. So if they have, it's just a memory aid. If they have that ball, heel lifted, there's no weight on that foot. So they don't waste any time and be able to go one. So uh, it helps a lot with timing in the basic march for the count one being the left foot. Thanks, Maureen. So now we'll move ahead to forward motion one. And the change that we made with this routine is that the retire is now done on the whole foot rather than on demi point. And also we want the athlete to maintain square to the corner on the ending pose so that we avoid the twisting that we uh, often saw uh, trying to face the judge. Uh, so we're gonna have it a more natural position. And we have uh, now gone back on the second side. We're gonna keep the baton in the right hand. So we won't be switching over to the left hand and that's applicable both to forward motion one and two. Um, and uh, just making it a little bit uh, smoother and easier. So this one, we're gonna watch um, the video and pay attention how the retire is done on the whole foot. And then we'll have some time for you to jump up and give it a try.
Okay, so time to try it. Uh, forward motion one. So if, if, if you want to jump up and give this a try, go ahead. Uh, and Maureen's going to walk us through side one and then side two. Okay, on, on the side one, the start position is with the toe already pointed. Uh, so now there's no uh, hesitancy on what foot they start with. And the walking pas de bourree is natural, turnout, or parallel. But when you do the plie in fourth position in natural or no, or uh, natural turnout or parallel feet, the back heel will lift. You don't deliberately pop it, but as you step forward into the plie, the front foot will be the whole foot and the back heel will be lifted on that plie. Uh, and that is correct. That's not wrong to do that for this uh, um, for this particular move in parallel feet. And then on the step into the retire, uh, you step, you stretch your foot and reach out with a stretched foot. So the toe, the ball of the foot, the toe is the first thing that actually hits the floor, but you lower your heel and bring your other foot to your knee in a retire position. But don't, I, we don't want them to step out heel first and go heel toe retire. We want them on the chassis to step out with a stretched foot, stretched foot reaching out beyond. So when they stretch that foot out, you don't pull it back to step on it, which is a common mistake. You're stretching out, you're going, the, the athlete will be in a, a bit of a plie from the uh, plie and forth. So you stretch that right foot out and the, the power to get onto that foot comes from the bent knee. So when you step out with your toe, you push from the back foot and you'll be on your whole foot in retiri. So it's it's an instant transfer of weight. And it's very important in forward motion one to get the feeling of that because in forward motion two, it's exactly the same, except when you step out, you step out further than where your toe is pointing and you do go directly to the demi point with a straight supporting leg, as opposed to bringing that toe back in and stepping down onto it so that knee in that leg is is straight right from the beginning right from the step out and that's a that's a little difficult to achieve uh, unless you break it down and it's a good thing to practice standing um, a little bit of a distance from the wall or from bar or from a chair and do your pot de bois, your pot de bourree, your walking pot de bourree towards the wall. Now you're in your plie. Reach out your foot and step forward, and you can grab the bar or grab the wall for balance. And and the the goal is to step out onto a straight supporting leg, and uh, onto the whole foot for forward motion one. And you'll see in forward motion two, the step out is onto the demi point. So we're trying to build the balance and strengthen the ankle. And that is why the hop is gone. The music was a little fast for them to get into the air and back down, which is why it was a little um, rushed and awkward looking. So we're, this is for better balance and better placement of that retire. So when they do hop in later events, it'll be a nice hop retire position in the air. Um, other than that, it's the same. Everything's the same and the notes are very clear. And then Maureen, can you, get, yes. Oh, can you just uh, um, touch base on count number eight at the end, where they where they're stepping out of the retire, and we're keep maintaining um, square to the corner. Yeah, your hips and show your hips are still to the corner, but your baton is here, so you can turn your shoulders as you turn your head. You don't have to stay like so, but your hips should go straight to the corner. And what we were doing before, when the uh, when we had the hop, they were turning and getting all out of alignment. So it really wasn't uh, training them in, a, in a, a good good direction for things that are coming later. So this is much more straightforward. So it's just the head that can turn and it, it may turn. They could keep it straightforward if they wanted. So if you have someone who has trouble with posture, don't worry about the head as the first thing you, you clean up, get the posture and the finished position, erect, straight, shoulder square, hip square, and then when they're solid with that, allow them to turn their head and their shoulders will naturally go with them. What you don't want is forcing the shoulders and forcing the head because it's written. Sometimes uh, you, have to, you have to 
read between the lines and back up a little bit. And so that's why we've done these baby steps for progressions so that it's step by step. And there are many, many students that will naturally know what to do with their shoulders. You won't have to teach them, but there's just as many that don't know what to do with their shoulders. So the, the posture here is very, very important. When they step out onto that foot, there's no throwing of the head to get there. It's all done with the supporting lick. And so everybody, if you've had a chance to try it, um, same thing goes on the other side, you're stepping out onto the right foot um, and your hobby baton in the right side. Um, any questions about this before we move on to uh, forward motion two? Hi, Dana, it's Leanne here. I was just gonna type something, but um, Maureen, can you please uh, clarify where the baton is on the start? Because previous video has it in front of the tummy and now we're saying oh, yeah. that it's a chest pass. So can we confirm yeah. that please? I think we're going to use this video. Okay. I think the old videos, um, this is this is the way it'll be because this is what the notes are corresponding to and the video and the notes are in alignment now where they weren't always in alignment before. So it will be here. Okay, thank you. And it is for clarity. It is totally for clarity. Good, okay. So we will move on to forward motion two. So now with forward motion two, we have taken out the hop as Maureen mentioned, and it's now a retiri on demi point. And again, maintaining square to the corner on the ending. And on the second side, the baton is in the right hand rather than the left hand. So we'll take a look at the video and then Maureen will walk us through it. You can see okay, that back. Sorry. You can see that that back heel naturally lifts yeah. when they step forward, and um, she had she had a little bit more turn than forward motion one, and it, but still maintained her posture. And the baton start position is with the arms down, and that is because of the push out. The push the up in and push was uh, dip, done various ways across the. And I think for, and for this level, it really should be quite clear and quite precise with the music. There's not that much need for interpretation of this. It's to get the positions correct. Uh, and again, reach out with that step, the reach out with the foot that you're stepping onto. But when they step, they have to push a little bit beyond that toe. So that takes a strong ankle. And I think that that should be practiced, I think. I think that could be taken out of this uh, combination and just practice as a separate little warm up exercise on its own, just to strengthen the ankle um, rather than try to strengthen the ankle through the continuing repeating of the choreography. Because if the ankle is weak, it's going to be weak. You have to strengthen that ankle first before it looks uh, the way you want it to look. So doing it holding on to a bar, uh, uh, if we don't have, if it, I, we don't always use the bar. We sometimes just put our hand on the wall. It's more for balance than anything. And uh, that works and you can have everybody doing that. Um, there's, and you can create some exercises on your own to strengthen the ankle. And uh, that's what you need and for that one. And um, it's a nice square turn. It's a quarter turn of the body. And what was happening before is the arms would go and the body wouldn't follow. So it is definitely forward, forward, and then a quarter turn. So it's, it's very precise. So I think. Um, so we've covered, yeah, yeah. Step, and then the step onto demi point. I think you touched base on that when we were discussing. Yeah, the step forward. onto demi point uh, makes, is, is the hardest part of that. And 
Um, so we've gone in baby steps and we went back to forward motion because as you'll see coming up when we did the, the use the forward motion to in medley, uh, we did that one and did, did it just a, a step, took out the hop. And so we just backed it up to so it came forward from the beginning properly. So do we have any questions about forward motion two? Hi, it's Leanne again. Maureen, can you please confirm the body movement for the ready position? Yeah, I, I think that it, uh, throughout, throughout all the videos and the notes, what the video is, that will be the starting position. So some of them may be uh, different from what we've had before, but uh, this new video will be the, the correct one. So. Okay, so the note says maintain erect posture with right foot pointed forward to corner one, right foot tendu devant. Mm -hmm. Is that what she did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so medley one, there was uh, no change made. So we're not going to do anything, uh, any review here, uh, because there's uh, quite a bit to go over for medley two. So in medley two, um, just a, we had a discussion and we just want to remind uh, everyone that the concept is to teach coordination, timing and performance skills while combining the fundamental body movements of turn, kick, leap, lunge, spin with basic baton skills, ensuring correct technique of both body and baton. Uh, and that was in the existing handbook and we haven't made a change to that. It's just a friendly little reminder here. Um, we have addressed the floor pattern challenges uh, because previously the routine traveled quite far towards corner three, so you'll see a change there. The retiree has been, or the hop has been changed to a retiree so that it matches what we're doing in forward motion two. Um, you'll see some gallops on a curve, so that's an um, uh, added skill. Um, we've added a left leg kick that, in the hopes of developing both sides of the body. We've added baton to the pivot turns and it's a taffy pull and it's being introduced in the SDP. Um, so they'll have that pre-learning. Um, and then we've also added some left hand wrist twirls to develop, develop both sides of the body. So we will, um, we will watch um, the video and then Maureen will take us through section two. Okay, and um, just a note there, uh, you can choose the ending pose for medley two now. So this one, I've got quite a few slides to go through. So we're gonna go through it in uh, counts of eight. So Maureen will take us through um, the first two counts of eight. Um, so it's the two walking pot de berets and it's one, one, two, three, hold four. And again, the back hill will, will be lifted and five, six, seven, hold eight. Ton is on the shoulder like the forward motion. And then you go to corner three, which is the back left corner with the two chassis. And then when you step forward with the left foot, step to all six and your retiree parallel will be a side view. And then you, they won't have that awkwardness of stepping to the corner and then trying to turn their head back to the front. So the step goes to the wall, which is half of that turn. And then their head can come. Uh, again, the... Um, the chasse chasse is stepping out with stretched feet. It's not heel first, heel first. So by this time, that would be quite a serious little error if the chasse was heel leading instead of the ball of the foot, in my opinion. So step into onto Retiri and then step down from the, um, the Retiri. And again, your back heel will be lifted and hold count eight. So the arms stay the same, you step up and then you step forward into your plie and that's the first eight counts. 
or the two sets of eight actually. Yeah, yeah, the first two sets of eight. So if anybody, if you're if you're up and trying it and you have any questions on this, these first two, uh, 16 counts, let us know. Uh, on the stretch, on the swinging arms in opposition, I, I like them to be in an L shoulder height. So that's what she's doing. Uh, it, it could have been forward and back, but then that's a little more awkward for the hop, for the step into Rotiri because your arms are in a modified fourth here. So you know, on the arm swinging, uh, arm swinging from L to L, but they pass down and up. So it's an, a natural swing in opposition with the chassis. Okay, any questions about these two uh, counts of eight? Okay, we'll move on. No, I oh, have. Want to see it okay. again? Ron, yeah, could, go we, ahead. could we see that again because uh, it stopped in the middle of it? Oh, did it? Yes. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to cross my fingers that this works because I've got the videos embedded right into the PowerPoint. So um, let's hope we don't crash because it doesn't like me going back and doing stuff. But here we go. Was that better? Yeah, it was good. Thank okay. You. Okay. Okay. So we'll let's move on to the third and fourth count of eight. Um, this is with our gallops, Maureen. Okay. Now we're going to the gallops. Um, turn the corner. So it's like a candy cane. The curl is at the front. You turn the corner, goes directly to the side, which takes you past the center point now we're over in in the other half of the square of the quadrant uh, on the four marches and that's at the waist and the four gallops and the star jump um, so you want equal extension of the legs on the star jump and there's not a lot of time to get a big uh, a big wide split in second it's really just to get from two feet up do something and land on two feet with control feet together, split, feet together, and hold count eight. So that's pretty much what we did. The only thing that's before, the only thing that's different is you get into the gallops and the turn a little e more easily this way. Okay, any questions about the third and fourth count of eight? Not much change going on here. Okay, we'll move on. The fifth count of eight. Okay, so now the drag step is a, is a lunge, a, a, a darting lunge. You step out with a nice stretched foot like we've been working on. And then it's called a drag step because this you bring the other foot across and step across the front. And uh, it's not tight to your supporting foot. It's quite wide. It's almost into a fourth when you step across. So your baton does a, a full arms, full arm circle, and then two little loops at the hip. Then you have your lunge, pull back into the dead stick and you catch that with your palm up at your waist. Now we have the two pivot turns. So you just turn your baton over. Do your okay, let me go to the next uh, one, oh, one second sorry. there, Maury. So any far? questions about- Oh, I'm this? at the end of the dead stick. Okay, so- we're Yeah, we're just at the end of yeah. the dead stick. So we right. just went with so. one count to eight on this one because there was a lot of words on this screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any questions about that? So one change is that instead of just doing one, it's both arms on the big circle and two loops and the yeah. other arm stays up. Okay, so now we're ready to go into the um, turns. Pivot turn. Yeah. So you turn the baton over <clears throat> to your, to your uh, it was at your chest here, you turn it over and you step up for the turn to the back and plie. Now the, Left hand just goes over the ball of the baton. Here's my baton. 
you're here, it goes over the ball and just slides it to the center. Now you've got it in your left hand. So that's sort of a reverse. It's not a full tappy pull, but for lack of, for not, for explanation, most people are familiar with the taffy pull. It can go either direction, it can go flat. So this from here is to the right hand. So it's up and over. So when you turn to the front, you're in forward direction, left hand. Um, figure eights or wrist rolls, whatever it is here. Well, we'll get there on the next one. So any yeah. questions so now about you're at the front, ready to do the step point. Yeah. So any questions about the pivot turns or the taffy pull? Okay, good. Now we're at the front and this is this is all new. It's wrist twirls. We tried both actually. If <laughs> you tried both and wrist twirls work the best with the foot action, like it's a, a twirl for each foot movement. So it's step and point. It would be two wrist twirls if they're unless they're slow. But that worked the best and then get this twisting action, trying to do the figure eight and keep your body straight. This worked out best, <clears throat> but the best for them. And I like them dipping. I like their arms still in the, the arms are still in second, but when you lean, uh, you're still in second position. You're in second position, but what's changed is you tilted your body. You haven't dropped your arm. So it's not step point, step point with your arms going, your arms maintain second, your body leans. So your arms are still second this way, and your head can look to the low hand. Then we have two of those. And then the, then the uh, step kick facing the corner. And now now we have to do a candy cane skip around the corner again. And it's the same, uh, it's a, it's seven counts for this ending. So your, your ending is count. And we, the old one was putting the baton on the floor and uh, you that's still fine if you like that. But some the feedback was that older students didn't like to do that. So um, older students probably would prefer a lunge, but it doesn't have to be a lunge. It could be whatever you choose. The main thing would be to hold seven, eight. Because then, and, and just thinking ahead, if you use forward motion two for the first two sections, I mean, if you use medley two as the first two sections, when you're ready to add the third section, just make sure the pose you give them is going to lead into what your first thing is in section number three. Like right now it's standalone. So you can be down, you can be up, but then that slow music in section three starts and you have to be moving on it. So that pose is important for that reason. And um, it's coach's choice for the pose. So a lot of it will be determined by what you want to do next. And so any questions about those last two counts of eight? No, okay, good. Moving right along. So we're ready to jump into solo one. And the change that happened here was that the roles have been updated um, to reflect the skills that are now in the new uh, revised SDP. So again, all the pre-learning is happening in the SDP. Um, and then they'll be able to plunk those roles right into the solo one. Uh, we've made a change uh, to the pattern change. It's now passed in a lunge. Um, and we've added some right hand reverse figure eights towards the end of the routine where the Ferris wheels used to go. Um, now you'll see, uh, as you watch this, you'll see uh, right hand reverse figure eights. And because of the stuff that we've added in, um, we needed to lengthen the piece of music because um, there wasn't going to be enough time to get everything done with the old one. So uh, you'll, you'll notice here that the music has um, Actually, you won't see it on solo one. You'll, you'll hear it more on solo two because solo one, um, when Elise demonstrates it, she didn't need a whole lot of extra music, but it's there and available if the kids do need it. So here we go. So watch for these things when you're watching the routine.
So if you'd like to try what we've changed here, um, we're going to focus on the roles that have been changed. Uh, so Maureen, did you want to walk us through that? Right. Uh, this, this, this way of doing these beginner roles has actually come from the Japanese six degrees of twirling skills. And um, we tried it out with the girls and uh, found already that the roles, the baton is rolling better and uh, they understand the, the contact points a lot, lot better. So it, uh, it will work well. So you're facing the side for the layout. On the layout, I've noticed a lot of girls put it on and they let their arm, they let their arm drop. So when you progress to the angel roll, you have to have that arm at your shoulder. So it can be a little bit below your shoulder, but as it comes down your arm here, you really need to maintain that level of arm so that the baton does the moving into the hand. It's not moving the hand to catch the baton and it's not swiping at the baton, baton you. They have to learn to hold their arm steady. Only one thing moves. Either the baton will move or your arm moves. And so that's just a, a good little thing for to remember on any combination on any skill is the baton moving or is the a hand moving to the baton because the baton can't be moving and you move your hand because you miss each other and that's what causes a lot of um, accuracy on aerials so it starts right at the beginning here so the two arm rolls are basically what they already were and then on these um, uh, arm roll over the top it's just from here rolls just that half bit and you reach underneath and catch it with your fingers up. Keep your hand in contact. It'll naturally loop as you turn and then you do the other half of the arm roll facing the back. So I don't know if you should really try it, I think, but it's here, you caught it, it rolls, you caught it under your arm, you turn, you roll it over your arm. Now you're gonna catch the palm up and when you turn, it does that natural loop to come back again. The mist mistake the kids make is they let their arms se separate. They don't reach under to catch it as it's rolling over their hand here. They turn and have their arms separated. So you really keep it together. So it's really the forward half and the reverse half of the roll. And the pivot action with the feet, that's, um, but the, they have to practice that separately at first. So um, if you have your right foot tondu in front, you're going to turn to the back foot for the other. So it's clearly the layout is facing the side with your arms in layout. Then you do the right hand flourish um, and step point your right foot forward with the tondu. So the upper ro arm roll series, you're facing the front here and it goes under over your arm, turn, roll, catch under and then loop, pass, loop. So it just follows through. And then you do the same thing, starting at the back and finish at the front. So if you go step by step, I think it's pretty clear um, which way you face and which. And I would suggest that uh, learn the feet first before you try to do the arm roll both ways with the pivot. Just practice doing that pivot. Uh, you miss uh, two hand spins at the front with your left foot forward and then pivot to the back and do reverse two hand spins with the other foot forward. So just practice, I mean, by the practice with the tondu, transfer to that foot and now the other foot's in tondu. You can't see my feet, just a minute, I'll move. Can you see my feet better? Now I, I okay, here's your tondu, are you here? So you're going to transfer your weight to that foot as you turn, and now that becomes the back foot, and the other foot is the tondu. So it's not a step and a point or anything like that. It's just transfer and pivot, transfer and pivot, which follows through all the way up the line to McFujimi rolls. And just an interesting little uh, side point. I taught this <laughs> little this little combination uh, to uh, the adult class. And um, they had no trouble with it at all. Some, some of them were former twirlers who have come back and uh, 
the comment they made is, oh, I wish I'd known that when I was beginning because roles were always my weakest. So this is breaking the, break, breaking the role down into a little bit at a time. And again, it's because this is where they are in their training. So it's more uh, breaking it down for coaching purposes as much as it is for execution from the kids. And so do we have any questions about the uh, role series? Does it look clear on the video? I think, it, well, it does to me, but. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, the resources will be the video plus the written description. So I think uh, people will be able to uh, figure it out and give it a try. But I mean, if there's any questions, you can always reach out, so. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah is at the studio, I think, with a baton in her hand. I'm not sure if she's in, but she said if anybody wanted to see it with an actual baton and not my big pencil. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're I think we're good for, uh, okay, for the yeah. uh, interest of time. Um, and then just the uh, pattern change. So it's the um, vertical uh, neck wrap under the knee, and then we're shooting the leg out to do the pass in the lunge. Anything you want to add there, Maureen? Um, no, no, just um, uh, stretch the toe when the knee is lifted and then keep it stretched when you slide it out for the, uh, for the lunge. And I think just generally uh, try to uh, eliminate extra steps. Like instead of being step and point your toe, it's going to come from the retiri to the lunge. So that means the weight stays on that supporting leg. And that's where, that's where they're, going to build their balance they shouldn't be wobbling when they're putting that baton around their neck to catch it under the leg um, and the other thing you bring the knee up to your chest you don't take your body down to the knee so that requires a fair amount not a lot of flexibility in the hamstring but a little bit because it's a much higher knee than the uh, marching knee and it's easier to do and prettier to look at if they don't bend forward too far so it's a common error that they think they have to take their head down to their knee where really they should, they're bringing their knee up to their baton. Okay, good. And then towards the end, we have the three reverse figure eights um, in place of the Ferris wheel. So um, done in the lunge position, the same as the Ferris wheel. So I think, uh, I don't know if there'd be any questions about that. No, and it's just and it's just after the flourish. It's just one thumb flip. It's not one a flip. yeah. Okay, and I've just had a, a question pop into the chat uh, asking about uh, the timing of when this is all effective and when the um, uh, when this material will be available. So yes, it's coming into play January first. Uh, all the routines, all the athletes will be expected to be doing these new routines, um, and the material will be posted on the website. Um, I can't speak for Jeff, but it's as soon as I uh, put the finishing touches on it tonight after this webinar, I didn't post it yet because I just wanted to make sure I have everything in there. Uh, it'll, it should be up this week. Yes, and there is a kick at the end. Yes, there is a kick at the end. Yeah. Just, just like before, just not the knee. Yeah, no change. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to solo two. Um, throughout this routine, uh, you'll notice uh, in the demonstration that the free arm position has changed uh, from ballet fifth into a high V palm in position. Um, a lot of comments uh, and things that we noticed were that the ballet fifth was never really hitting the ballet fifth. So you'll, need, you'll see now it's a high V, but the palm turned in. Um, many of the full hand twirls are now executed, pulled up in uh, fourth rather than jazz standing flat foot in jazz first. So just a, an extra uh, skill for the athletes to work on. The rules have been updated to reflect the skills in the SDP and they're a really good progression from our solo one. Um, we've removed the crazy pretzel. And again, the music is longer. So on this video, Elise does finish before the end of the music, but I've let the music play so that you see that there's a good um, seven seconds still there in music because Elise is doing it quite, um, she's not going super fast, but um, it should allow enough time for the slower athletes to still. Yes, get in it. solo one, she did her figure eights 
her figure eights in that little figure eight exercise. She almost did it in meter with the baton with the music. Yeah. And by solo two, I think that they should be twirling through the music more on those figure eights. And yeah. it's not meant to be in our musical routine in that sense, but for them to count the four, the four and be precise with the four figure eights for solo one. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't rush them there because you want very erect uh, vertical figure eights rather than waving. Yeah, okay, so watch for these changes in the video and then we'll uh, have some time to try it out and walk through it in a little bit more detail after the video. Oh, and on this one, I also have, um, so we have, Elise does the illusions in here at the end, but of course we have the option of the développé, the needle, or the other, sti other side of illusion. So those videos are also at the end of this routine uh, little uh, section. So we'll watch those as well. Oh, I missed it. There we go, here we go. Okay, did that play okay for everybody, I hope? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we will uh, try, you can jump up and try the roles. We'll go over some of the roles here. So Maureen, if you wanna take us through the um, roles that happen after the okay, so layout. Uh, so after the layout on the right arm, it's finger to a layout, finger to a layout. You step forward and do a flourish and that turns you back to wall eight. So it's a full flourish to turn you the three quarters of the turn to side. So it's three hand rolls, which is actually the fishtail, but you do the hand roll at the back, hand roll at the front, hand roll at the back. 
and then you face the front, your right hand vertical flourish. Now, the elbow is the same as the arm, except it's the elbow, and the footwork is the same. The catches are the same. So it's over, catch, turn, catch. And then I think she did uh, uh, the turn again with the other hand. So now we're back to facing the wall, the right wall, and it's the three fishtail hand rolls. So it's front plane, back plane, front plane. So the whole little roll section actually is executed right and left sides. And uh, uh, it's a lot, a lot smoother and the turns are a lot simpler than what we had before to teach and to do. They don't lose their balance. And uh, I noticed that you can, you notice that she stepped up into the demi point and forth for the figure eights. And uh, she's fairly strong, but by the end of the fourth figure eight, her demi point had sunk <laughs> quite a little bit. So you can see that that's, that's going to be challenging for the, the younger athlete to stay up on the demi point. But I think they need to try it um, and they will get stronger in doing it. We added the paddles. So they've got elbow roll front and back, layout front and back, the start of a fishtail and paddles. So it's better roll variety than last the last solo two. And that's the part I think that really required more music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then after the two paddles, so left, right, left, right, then we go into the past behind stretch knees for a pattern change. So that's where you, we, the, we used to have the pretzel, but now it's just a simple pass. Mm -hmm. And then uh, take advantage of the pass with stretch knees to really bend forward, keep the knees straight, weight forward and feel the stretch behind the knees. Don't let them bend their knees and pass. And if, if they're not flexible, I mean, that, of course, some aren't going to be as flexible, then they don't have to pass quite as low. They don't have to take their body so low. If they just bend forward as far as they can go without having to bend their knees, they can still pass behind their knees. They should be able to bend at least to a flat back without having to bend the knees. Now, Elise got her head a lot lower than that, which is what you're working for. But okay, so are there any questions about the roles from solo two? No, okay. Um, ready to move on to two baton one. Um, so the only change here um, is that we added hand rolls. Um, oh, sorry, one second before we go on to two baton one. Uh, just to confirm, no more right hand flat toss. Um, correct. Yeah. It's gone. So save that for save that for your C solo. Yeah. That doesn't mean they shouldn't be practicing it, um, but it it's not in here. Okay. Two baton one. So watch for the little. They, they go quick. There's some added hand rolls in here because there were no rolls in at two baton one before. So that's one thing that we wanted to address. So with that, you'll also remember that uh, in the pre-competitive routines, we use the same music for solo and two batons. So the longer solo two baton music is also used for two baton one, um, and they will finish early, but that's okay. Uh, so Maureen, do you want to take us through those hand rolls? Right. So they're in opposition. So you're doing your figure eights. So when it you do the one hand roll with the figure eight and as it 
goes to the back, you do the other hand roll with the other hand. So they're in opposition. And is the, and I and I there's just two, isn't there? Hand roll in each hand. It's not four. So Correct. I think in practicing you should practice four, but in the routine it's only going to be one in each hand. But it uh, it worked it worked well to do it one hand at a time rather than both this way and both that. And it was mainly because you wanted to always end in the center of the baton. So you you can slide a little below center and then do your hand roll and you're back to center, or you can slide a little above center and you come back to center. But when you did both at the same time, there was always a little shift to get it so that the hand roll ended in the center. So this is the solution. This is what we came up with. And uh, it wasn't difficult for them to do at all. And the description is, is good. Pinky in the back plane and pinky to the web in the front plane like it's clear so uh if anybody's giving it a try right now are there any questions and i think like all to the time they should do one hand at a time so do the right hand reverse figure eight hand roll and just remember you're going to slide it above center to get back to the center then the left then the forward figure eight I might have the hand, I might have the directions backwards, but you, when you're working at no wind, you have to slide so that the handle brings the baton back to the center. So that's, that's a skill not to grip those batons so tight that you can't let the baton, the shaft, your hand slide along the shaft. And it keeps them more relaxed if they do that. And it will eliminate those, the break. Good. Okay. No change to two baton two. So we will not be uh, going through anything here. And now we're ready to move on into solo dance twirl one. Um, so just a note here, solo dance twirl as an event allows for growth from medley one and two, um, music interpretation, teaching musicality and phrasing. And therefore it was felt that solo dance twirl one should remain unique uh, and continue to teach new steps. Um, and then the progressions of forward motion and medley is building the vocabulary of steps for younger students. And solo dance twirl is likely four years into training. And the old and so you have older athletes and we give them more skills to work on um, by having a solo dance one that's different than solo dance two. So um, watch this video and then we'll go through everything for you. So some pieces are still there and others have been changed and added. So um, Maureen, do you wanna take us through? Um, well, this was a composite of uh, a lot of practice routines and, uh, that er people, everyone submitted. And, and, and this was sort of the more common things that they wanted to keep. And um, it, I, mean, it's, I think it is more musical than the original solo dance one. So uh, I, th I think it is an improvement. Uh, the taffy pull is new. And again, the ending po position, the ending pose is a deep lunge, um, which is going to help with the flexibility. So it works well with forward motion too. Uh, not forward motion too, medley too. It, it works well with that. So um, if they were learning these at the same time, there's familiarity and and this one adds the musicality. So you don't have to do um, all the level ones at the same time and all the level twos at the same time. You could be level one in some things, level uh, two in some others. You could spend two years in level two. You don't have to do a solo dance level each season. This would be very, uh, very good to start do two seasons and then have two seasons for the other one. And then you're ready for C solo dance. So, um, the only thing that is new would be the happy pull with the body circle and 
And then at the end, they do the little reverse one that we had in medley two to get into the ending position, the, the pose. Um, and then also, can you go over, no, I'm just case. Okay, so this is the first um, two counts of eight. So it's basically the, um, it's very similar to the last one with the drag no, stamp. We took, we took out the, the ballet turn. We took out the ballet arms. We just made it a more natural arm that uh, a non-ballet student would feel comfortable doing. Took out the little ballet runs. So um, it it's a, a smaller build up from medley than it was before. And uh, it's more in keeping, I think, with what coaches were comfortable with teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got the uh, step points with the um, diagonal arms, uh, similar to what we have in medley two, but this one's with um, right hand figure eights rather than left hand wrist twirls. Wrist twirls. Yeah. And then um, can you go over the um, hips? And then the gallops. Right, the hips are done in a plie, and your your baton is swinging with your hips, and you, there's really no big exaggerated hip action. It's just sway from side to side, but it's a little funky and a little fun, and um, it it gives it a boost for the and it fit, fits the music well there. Um, and your arms are swinging with your hips, so it's not difficult jazz technique. It's very very basic. And then on the fourth one, you brush your right foot up behind your knee. And now that is in a plie. I think we said plie, but they have to hold that plie before they do the gallops. Didn't do any twirling on the gallops because it was on the diagonal. And the only thing that would have worked was wrist twirls. But from the hips, it was hard to get into. You'd have to do reverse wrist twirls. So we just held it and then added the jump from two feet to two feet which filled that space up, the, the musical space. And, yep, then, and then, uh, then we go on our transition of our chassis around the curve. And which they've had. Yep. And the music picks up there, so their energy should also pick up. And I think it naturally does just because of the music. Then circle over the head, neck wrap, horizontal figure eight behind the head and back to here. Now you do the grab, turn it over, turn it over and lunge. So it's two little changes. It's turn it over and turn it over. So bring it to your shoulder, reach down to the floor, come back, oops, you can't, back, back up to here. Then we have the reverse into the lunge. So you have to do that count by count, but it's, it, should, it should be as full a circle as you can make. It doesn't stay just around the waist. They go to their, uh, sh their, they go to their shoulder and go right down close to touching their toe as they can. Very good. And I, I apologize. I notice I have a typo here. I have horizontal figure eights. It's horizontal wrist twirls. I will make that correction before um, that goes out. So just caught myself on something. And horizontal um, figure eights. It's oh. wrist twirls. Oh, wrist twirls. On the step. It's wrist twirls. Yeah, that's, my, that's my error. Yeah. So I will correct that before it goes out. Um, Good. So do we have any questions on solo dance for one? No? Okay. Um, solo dance twirl two. So just um, we've just adjusted the timing of the pivot turns um, so that they take four counts each. They used to be very fast at two counts each. So you'll see that uh, in the opening. And also the timing of the up, up, down, down has been slowed down so that it's one count for each step as well. So exactly. watch for that. Um, and then Maureen will take us through that after we watch the video. So was it in solo dance one that we took out the toss in the, or is that in this one, the horizontal you'll, toss? Oh, you're, sorry, I didn't type that on this slide. Yes, thanks for catching that. Um, I must have been getting tired by the time I was yeah. doing these. Um, we've left the horizontal toss in, but we took out the um, neck uh, toss. It used to be a neck wrap and a figure eight that was too fast, and now it's just the neck wrap into the toss. You'll you'll see here.
So it's um, we took out the neck wrap, and it is the um, pass figure the eight pass and the figure pass. eight into the toss. And then, of course, that now the ending pose is um, coach's choice as well. So, Maureen, I'll let you take us through the pivot turns and the up, up, down, mm -hmm. down. So it's it's one hole two turn hole two up hold three uh, up three turn so it's up and hold and turn and hold and up and hold and turn and then the, the up up hold down down never uh, i was always started with the wrong foot which was some um no an error in the notes and i always wondered why they, there was that little glitch to get onto the other foot and so that's been fixed but the timing of it has been just to go second second close close right left right left and then up up and then close both feet together so up up in in up up close now i think elise went a little quicker because she's so used to doing the fast one i think she went up up down down up up and close but keep it even and I think if yeah. you did it a little quick, I don't think that anybody's going to. Use. In the notes, I tried to I tried to be specific with the counts here. So um, breaking it down for one, two, three, and four. So hopefully that's helpful to people. And then you do have N5, hold six. Yeah. For the last one. So that is clear. That is very clear. Right. Um, so that's uh, any questions about solo dance troll two? Nope. Okay. So uh, just a comment about the general mechanics section. Uh, it's not graded. It's never been graded and it still will not be graded. So we're going to leave it as an area for the judge to provide comments and note any inconsistencies without penalizing the athlete. Um, so we will not grade it, but there was, we did discuss that, um, but settled on leaving it the same. Yeah, just, just so co the coaches uh, recognize and realize that the better the general mechanics are, the um, higher, better ribbon and better comments they're going to get. But uh, that's a coaching thing. And it, they, the judging goes so fast that um, comments could be made, but don't neglect the mechanics just because it's not being graded. It is being graded overall. It isn't being graded specifically, but the general mechanics are very, very important for, for down the road. So uh, don't think, oh, it's not being, just don't, just don't fall into the trap of thinking, well, it's not being graded. I don't have to worry about that. Yes, she's passing it upside down, but it's not being graded. Make those minor detailed corrections in the learning stages so that those mistakes don't become their technique because then it is a problem. It isn't a problem for this pre-comp because this is not competitive. This is developmental and it's for um, it's high level recreation. They're still so they're not supposed to be being slotted into, you know, you're good, you're not good. This is nice. It's supposed to be for everybody learning to twirl and having a specific syllabus to follow. So I just I just worry that because it says not graded. We might take the easy way out and not worry about it. We need to worry about it, but it, it, the kids don't need to worry about it. I guess that's that's the end uh, result that they won't they won't be worried about a low mark because their two hand spins were not smooth, for example. But in class, you you know keep working for a good technique. Okay, and uh, just wanted to touch base on the role models. Uh, and then I see Ton. Oh, Tana, did you have a question about that before I move on? Um, I just had a question from earlier, and and I couldn't type fast enough to get it in. Uh, so I thought maybe just answering it now before we move into too many other sections. Uh, it was back in the solo two, where they're now on the rise for those reverse figure eights. If we're working with some younger students who maybe aren't ready for that rise position, if we are doing them on on flat feet like they used to be. And obviously, you know, I guess the judges is taking that into consideration. Some of the younger kids that may have the advanced twirls at six and seven years old might not have that ankle uh, strength yet to stay on the rise without those ankles starting to bend outwards. And then it looks really, really bad. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, do we have a bit of coach's choice there for knowing each athlete and their ankle support? Well, I, I think if you've got the baton skills ahead of the body skills, you need to slow down a bit and bring the body up to the baton. So I would do some other exercises to strengthen those ankles sooner. And I don't think there would be a major, um, I, I can't speak for the judges, but I, I think if they're not able to hold the demi point in without, as you say, rolling and wiggling, um, um, that could be even posture that's causing that to happen. So I wouldn't let it go just for the sake of being on. I would, I would do, I would rather they be flat footed personally and do the figure eights, but as a coach and in your program, maybe they've been concentrating more on the baton side of it. And we're trying to keep the baton development and the body development equal, more equal than it has been. So, um, you might have you might have to just bring in some exercises for the ankle and and it doesn't take long to get them aware of their balance on the demi point um but i'm thinking by solo two they would be a lot older than seven okay all right i appreciate so, that but uh just it is doesn't and it doesn't hurt to go back and bring in something that hasn't been taught because it was never required before and sometimes that can be fun because it's in an early stage of the development so it's relatively easy for or it's not a chore to go back and do it it's something that they maybe just weren't aware of but if you have a, if you have a seven-year-old doing solo too she's making great progress on baton skills so take a little bit of time and work on the ankles just rises in first to start with the fourth is harder because it's fourth position right Okay. Thank and another you. another intermediate thing that you might want to do is just do a one tondu. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if it's an older girl, an older student or a boy, of course, demi point would be nice because when they're doing one spins and two spins, you want them spinning on the demi point, and it's too late if they haven't been building the ankles up to them. So the whole idea of some of these changes in the skill development program is to give everybody an early start on what you want to see as a finished product down the road. Like today on the compulsories, they want to go fast, but you don't just decide one morning you're going to go fast. Your speed comes over time because you've done the repetition. And uh, when you try to go fast and push the speed, it's worse than if you were slow. So repetition is what's going to strengthen them and repetition is what's going to build the speed up. And they'll be fast and they don't even realize how they got there. And then one and the measure is time them for speed. Time them once, once a month. And you'd be surprised at how much faster just doing it on a regular basis. But I, I know everybody thinks I'm in front of the judge, I've got to go fast, but it's sort of the other way around. You should you should relax in front of the judge so it's smooth. It's, it's smoothness plus speed, not speed for the sake of speed. You need the control. So it's a constant two steps forward, one step back. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. Okay, uh, and you'll just touch on the role models here. So of course, we will continue to use the current role model videos, even though the routines have had changes. Um, our role model scripts at the pre-competitive level, they describe qualities related to execution. So um, not so much, um, the step-by-step -step content of the routine, but I think that our judges will be able to apply the um, the scripts from the, I'm going to say, old routines and, and apply them to the new ones. Um, and of course, as our library builds, we will uh, work on upgrading the um, role models to reflect the new routines, but that's going to take time because right now we have zero routines in the library that are new. So. Um, be patient with us and we will get that um, get that going. So that's the end of our presentation. Are there any other questions that anybody would like to ask? Well, um, there's a message here from Wendy. Uh, she says how the judges will evaluate these events if they're completing the old routine. Well, I'm, I was under the impression that starting January 1st, everyone will be doing the new routines. Yes, it's the new routines. Um, I guess there's the possibility of an athlete making an error in doing the old routine, but um, we should not be seeing 
that coaches are asked now to uh, transition to these new routines by January 1st. So um, we don't want to see you deliberately putting an old routine out on the floor. No. Then there was one other question from Deir Deirdre. Uh, we said there was a start in a tondu and she didn't start in a tondu. Was that solo? Do you remember Deirdre? No. There, so we'll, we'll just have to check to make sure the, the start position is what we said it was supposed to be. I will uh, go back and I'll double check my notes against the video and we always end up, uh, what I'm really, really trying to avoid here is that our video is different than our written. So now that the videos are done, um, I'm, I've gone through eight count by eight count to match up wording and I, I did catch myself on something tonight. So um, I will take another look and I'm gonna go back and check that start position and I'll make the written match. Yeah, so, what it, so whatever. Dana, Dana, I know it was a uh, forward motion number two. Okay, yeah, I've got a note. Yeah, thank you, okay. thank you. So whatever she does in this I'm, video, you'll fix the notes accordingly. Yeah, I'm gonna make yeah. the notes match the video. So um, I think Elena has her hand up and then, um, I do have another comment that I hope I don't forget to say um, at the end. So, uh, Elena? So in medley two, the fifth count of eight, we do the dead stick, pull back to catch left hand, pull up center body while closing left foot to right foot and jazz first. Then it says hips and feet to wall six with slight pike at hips. What does that mean, pike at hips? Pike is a bend at the hip. So uh, it, it, it's like at about a 45 degree bend. So this angle here, that's the pike. If it's a full pike, they're right down to their nose, to their knees. Thank it, you. Comes, it comes from diving. But the slight pike means um, your, your bottom half up. is straight and you just bend over. So right at your hip joint, a, you're in an angle. For it. It's slight, but it looks, it looks nice and it's good control to do. Any other questions? No. Okay, so um, I will um, get these uh, videos and I'm going to do one more run through of the manual because uh, I want to make sure it's as close as it can be to correct. That being said, this year is the year for you to work with this. If you notice anything in the manual that's unclear or that doesn't match the video or I've made a mistake, um, make note of it and please let me know because I wanna make sure that we're gonna um, have everything wrapped up and tight uh, for once we get it, the final approval on it in, in uh, next fall. So this year is the year that we're, we're working through this, we're um, gathering the videos, we're making sure that um, videos match written and everything like that. So um, please do let me know if you, if you come across anything that's unclear or that I've made a blatant mistake on. So I'll just check the chat there. Okay, we're good. Okay, so with that, I think we'll wrap up. Um, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Maureen, for all of your helpful hints tonight. Uh, and good luck, everybody, as you work through this. <laughs>